Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to install ESLint with Visual Studio Code. So you can use ESLint with many different text editors and IDEs, but Visual Studio Code is the one that I use the most when I'm building JavaScript projects. So that's what we're going to use today. So first of all, what is ESLint and what is linting? So ESLint is a package that makes linting your project really easy. And linting is basically enforcing a style guide, a code style guide throughout your project so that you can maintain consistent style throughout your project, a uh, code style. So first of all, we're gonna be using this simple bare bones project. It is a React application and the React app is served by an Express API. So first of all, to get started, we're going to install the ESLint extension. And in Visual Studio Code, to get your extensions, you hit this button here. And I've disabled all of my extensions. So this is going to be exactly what you're going to see. I'm going to look for ESLint and I'm going to install it. And now that that's installed, we can go back to our project. So now that we have the extension installed within Visual Studio Code, we're going to install the ESLint package within our project. To do that, I'm going to pull up a terminal. And I'm going to say npm install dash dash save dev to save this as a dev dependency, eslint. I wouldn't worry about these errors here. This is just because I seem to be running an old version of Node. I need to update that. So next, because we have eslint installed, we're going to initialize it within our project. To do that, we're going to say eslint dash dash init. And this is going to run us through a wizard, which is going to allow us to configure eslint the way we want to. So how would we like to use eslint? So it gives us three options. We're going to pick the bottom one to check syntax, find problems, and enforce code style. What type of modules does your project use? Uh, so as we can see in this, our project uses require modules. So we're going to choose that. Which framework does your project use? Uh, so we're using React. And where does your code run? Browser or Node? So our project actually runs in the browser and outside the browser because our server is running Node. So we're going to select everything using A and we can see everything selected and we can hit enter. So how do we like to define a style? So this is where we choose the style guide that we want to enforce. And I think the most easiest way to do this is to use a popular style guide where someone else has already defined all of the rules. And we're going to use the Airbnb style guide. And what format do we want our config file to be in? We're going to choose JSON. And now this is going to install some other dependencies for us. We're just going to hit yes. And yes, install them now. So that has installed a bunch of dependencies for us. And if we go into package.json, we can see them here. So we have ESLint and these other dependencies that the wizard installed for us. And we can also see something new that popped up here. We can see this problems tab, which appears to be showing us some problems that our project has. So ESLint is always already doing some magic here. But before we look at this, we're going to look at this .eslintrc file. So this file actually contains all of the rules that eslint is enforcing. So if our project doesn't follow these rules, it's going to hint us here at problems. And because we installed the extension earlier, we can see we also get this visual cue of some style problems our project has. So before we look at these problems, I'm going to show you how to run this from the terminal. And this is useful because this can also run as part of your CI continuous integration to find problems. So to do that, we're going to add a script and we're just going to call it lint. And we're just going to say eslint and lint everything within here. And we're going to see in a second, this is going to cause us some problems, but we'll also be able to fix that. So now that we have this script defined, we can say npm run lint. And this is going to run eslint within our project. 
Whoa, as you can see, this is crazy. We have over 30,000 linting problems, which doesn't really seem correct because our project is pretty small. So this is happening because we defined to lint everything, it's also linting all of our node modules. So any JavaScript libraries we're using are in here, and we're actually linting all of those, which we don't want to do because we don't own those files. So to fix this, similar to a git ignore file, we're going to create a eslint ignore file. So I'm just going to touch dot eslint ignore. And inside this, I'm going to use pretty similar to our git ignore because we don't want to lint our node modules and we also don't want to lint our build this directory because this is where all of our react code is being minified and built and i think our linter is going to find a lot of problems there because the code is minified um, and we again that's code that's generated so we don't really care so much what the style is like so i'm just going to ignore both of these directories from our linting and if I run lint again, we shouldn't get as many errors this time. So as you can see, we just have five problems. So that's we can deal with that. So to run through these problems, we can see inside server.js, the same as our visual guide has given us. Um, it's telling us that we're missing a semicolon on line two, which we are, so we can fix that. And we're also missing a semicolon here, so we can fix that. And for this one, I can show you the power of ESLint and also Visual Studio Code. So it's telling us to use path.join instead of plus. Um, and it just doesn't like the way we're concatenating these strings. So we could spend a few seconds fixing that, or we could click quick fix here and fix this. And it will do the fix for us. So as you can see, our, that was fixed for us. So we didn't have to worry about typing out these backslashes or anything, it just did it for us. So if we save this again, and we run lint again, we'll see where our problems are. So as you can see, all of our problems have disappeared now, exactly what we wanted. And now within our whole project, we can follow these style guides. And any new code that we write, uh, we should be able to maintain, maintain this good code style and quality. It's especially useful if you're building a project with multiple people um, and you want everyone's code to kind of look the same and everyone to follow the same patterns. So this has been how to install and use ESLint within Visual Studio Code. Hope it helped you out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.